Now, in what has been described as their greatest moment in Test cricket history, touring India completed a sensational three-wicket victory over Australia at the Gabba on the final day of their four-test series. India starting the day needing 324 more runs to win with all 10 wickets intact. Now, with rain in the forecast, a tricky final day uh, wicket and the knowledge of a uh, draw being enough for them to retain the Border Gavaska Trophy, few would have bet on them going on to win. But as Donald Oliver reports, their final day performance was nothing short of epic. This is quite an advert for Test cricket. So much intrigue, so much anticipation. India so resumed the day on four without loss, chasing a victory a target of 328. Yeah. But they lost Rohit Sharma early in the piece. Takes the catch. Shubman Gill has been sensational to behold. Full of zone generally works, but on this occasion it works for Shubman Gill. Aggressive and stylish with hints of disdain. His modus operandi during the series. And strong off the back foot throughout the series, Shubman Gill. On his way to a second half century. Second test 50. He and Cheteshwar Pujara put on 114 for the second wicket. Fueled badly by Gill's impeccable timing. Takes it on again. There's men back that he's really got a hold of that. But nine runs short of his first Test 100, the 21-year-old edged Nathan Lyon to slip. Pujara, in the meantime, was being battered, literally. I haven't seen a batsman being hit so many times since the English toured the West Indies in 1998. He must, he must feel like a dartboard. <laughs> he's just getting pinned. That would hurt too. And still, he persevered. It's a bit of length to play with there, Pajara. Ajinkya Rahani nicked Patrick Cubbins. Rishabh Pant came in and was deceived by one from Lyon. It would have been a most difficult stumping for Tim Payne to have executed. But Pant probably felt luck was on his side as he launched into Lyon in his next over. Pujara was less brutal on his way to a half century, playing the sheet anchor role to perfection. Heads towards the road, 50 for Chiteshwa Pujara. And then he was trapped in front by Cummings. The review by Pujara wasn't to be overturned, as according to DRS, the bails would have been clipped. Cummings with a new ball. Mayank Agarwal was another to be dismissed by Cummings. And now it was a race against time. And after Washington Sundar showed his class with this straight drive, the visitors the needed to go at five and over in the final 11 overs. But if India is the home of the IPL, Brisbane was Goshen. Pant and Sundar pulled out the styles and all the luck limited overs cricket could have afforded in this test chase. And by the time Sundar was dismissed after another flirtation with the unorthodox, India was close. Pant fittingly closed proceedings. It's four, it's down the ground, it'll be at least one. Saini, he's got an injury with the groin. It goes as far as the fence. India, incredible. Rishabh Pant is the star. India win the test. They win the series. It's a stunning achievement from this India team, which defied injuries and the odds to be part of a cricketing legacy befitting of sporting gods. Every ball of this gripping four test series seen live on Sportsmax. We are joined by international cricket commentator Fazir Mohammed as we relive the final day of what was a riveting test series. Uh, Faz, in the Sydney test, the Aussie captain Tim Payne had a lot of chatter and sledging. The Indians decided that they wouldn't talk, they would perform. How solid was their performance on final day and the series victory overall? It wasn't just solid, Lance. It was inspirational. And I think uh, all of the experts when it comes to Indian cricket, uh, I can't find any reason to fold what they have said. Uh, I've read quite a bit uh, during the course of the day. Sambit Bal, the, uh, the ESPN Cricket Info editor, has described it as the greatest moment in Indian cricket. And when you try your best to put it in contact with all of the different issues, and primarily the loss of almost all of their prominent players throughout the four test matches being routed for 36 in the first ever 
everyone had written them off with the departure of Kohli. And now to see Ajinkya Rahane holding the trophy, not with a, a drawn series, but with an historic victory because they don't win at Brisbane. No one beats Australia at Brisbane. The last time, of course, being the West Indies way back in 1988. So when you lump everything together, when you put all the context of the individual players and their own personal journeys to this point, it has to be the great, the greatest moment uh, in Indian cricket when it comes certainly in, in Test cricket. Yeah, well, Ajinka Rahani is 100 in the second test, which sort of um, resuscitated India on uh, an assignment that uh, Rahani, you know, had to be shouldering the captaincy role. It seems so distant in our memories now because that is almost lost uh, on us based on what happened in the third and fourth test matches. But you mentioned yesterday when we were talking about the West Indies in Bangladesh, Faz, about uh, these young new players trying to galvanize themselves around the new captain, Jason Mohammed. Is that, in a manner of speaking, what happened in Australia with the Rahani taking over the reins from Virat Kohli? Absolutely. And I find it difficult to understand why he wasn't named the man of the series. Of course, those accolades are, are minor. But when you really think about it, again, Taking over the captaincy, you've been decimated for your lowest ever test score. Your captain has just departed your premier batsman. You've already lost Mohammed Shami, one of your premier fast bowlers. You respond with a hundred that lifts your team to what was eventually a comfortable victory, but a tremendous bounce back almost immediately. And thereafter, you lead India. He said, and again, we need to point this out that. Chateshwa Pujara and Ajinkya Rahani were the only two players in the Indian squad to play all four test matches. The only similar occurrence that I can recall was 1978 with the West Indies when Alvin Kalicharan and Derek Parry were the only players to play all five tests against Australia in the Caribbean. That was because of the Packer exodus after the second test match, and therefore those were very different circumstances. I find it difficult not to, to look beyond, uh, to, I find it difficult to have to look beyond Ajinkya Rahani as the man of the series. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Faz, because I, I know Pat Cummins had a pretty solid season series for the, for the, the Aussies, but based on how the series turned out, Rahani, based on his impact on the series, and Richard Pant, Pant in the third test and the fourth test, uh, pretty much decided the series. So I'm a little lost on how Pat Cummins was named player of the series. And indeed, but again, okay, maybe it's a hometown decision, whatever it is, and I doubt very much Ajinkya Rahane is losing any sleep over this because at the end of the day, I think what, what India have shown not just the strength in depth, and I think that is the worrying thing for other nations of the cricketing world. The, the, the level of the depth that they have in test cricket, the, the fact that they've got someone in Ajinkya Rahani, who many people might be arguing now is a better leader than a Virat Kohli, who leads by example and almost intimidation and so on. And you know, we can get probably carried away with that as well. But I, I think when, when you look at the, the overall picture of it, you've got an Indian squad where players who played such key roles in retaining the Border Gavaskar Trophy will not find a place in the final 11 for the upcoming series against England. Yeah. Fazir, let's stay with the captaincy issue a little bit longer because here's the thing. Many people had already written India's obituary after Virat Kohli left Australia to go back to India. And the script had already been prepared to say, totemic, talismanic captain goes, team falls apart. What do we say about the impact that Kohli has on the India team that in his absence they can have galvanized themselves as they did and rallied around the captain as they did Rahani? Isn't that evidence that the Kohli influence on this India team may be even bigger than we have given him credit for when he has been there physically leading the troops through battle? You're absolutely right about that, George, but I want to take it even further back to Surav Ganguly. When he led India in Australia, I think it might have been 2003, 2004, around that time. And Surav Ganguly, as anyone who knows Surav, Surav Ganguly, the cricketer, is often described as an arrogant so-and-so by his opponents. And it, that, that is the new India. We've talked about this quite a bit over the last few years, Lance and yourself, about this Indian team, Sunil Gavaskar alluded to it, that these young men have no fear. This idea of being the timid India and being also polite and following them in the manner of the British Raj and being very colonial and very, very modest with their, their behavior. They 
can be almost obnoxious with it. Certainly, they're very demanding with it as an administration because they definitely throw their weight around in international cricket, even more so than England and, and, and Australia. And I think Ganguly, then into Virat Kohli, of course, with, with, with that gap. But with, with, you had Mahindra Singh Dhoni, a very different type of leader. But then you've got Virat Kohli almost taking it to the next level with the aggression, with the self-belief, with, with the, the, the arrogance that comes with a team that believes that whatever the situation, they can either get out of it, they can dominate. It may not happen all the time. They'll need a bit of luck as Rishabh Pant with that stumping chance. That's all part of the game. These things happen. But when a team believes in itself, as Gary Player, the South African golfer, fam famously said when he was told, well, he's very lucky. He said, you know, the more I play, the luckier I get. Yes. And I think India, the more they believe in themselves, the more the luck turns their way. Yeah, we're going to address the issue of Tim Payne's captains in another segment with you, Fazir. But we had had to speak about Kohli's influence on, on, on India for now. But let's look at Australia. In, in uh, It's not perverse, but in, in, in a, 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 a specific kind of way, Fazir, I'm thinking, yes, Australia have been beaten 2-1 at home, and the fact that the decisive test came at the Gabba where they have not lost since that nine-wicket thrashing at the hands of the West Indies in 1988 must hurt and it must count for something. But when you look at the totality of the series... We can't say that Australia lost and were humiliated, that Australia lost the series and were outplayed street and lane in every department. We have to say that Australia played well, but this vintage not quite good enough. How so, the question I'm trying to ask is, how do you assess the victory? As Australia playing well but falling short, or Australia not being good enough but falling short? If you see the new ones right there. I hear you. I don't want to take anything away from India simply because of the fact of the number of players that they would have lost, whatever Australia were doing. But you're right. And, and, and I'm hearing a narrative about this being one of the great Australian bowling attacks. I beg to differ. They, 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 they are players there with enormous potential, but some of them lack consistency. Mitchell Stark, for example, Hazelwood is there, Cummins is there. Uh, the Lion didn't really have the best series that he wanted. So I, I, I would hesitate in this rush to describe this as a triumph against one of the great Australian and bowling attacks. They dropped chances. They missed opportunities along the way. Their captain was a prime culprit in, 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 that, in that regard. This is an Australian team that is nowhere near the peak of some of the fine Australian teams over many decades. But having said all of that, I know, because we've seen it happen before, that they're going to rebound in a way that will once again embarrass the West Indies because they're not going to get caught up in all sorts of agonizing and twiddling of thumbs and, and wondering who's going to say what and who's going to get offended and who's going to lose his job and so on. They're going to deal with it frontally. And even if there might be an element of, of panic as we look on it from a distance, they value this thing called test cricket and the, the baggy green far too much to just simply say, well, okay, this was just the rub of the green and we move along. If I stick with us, a terrific performance by India to retain the Border Gavaska Trophy. A great day for Indian cricket, but one to forget for the Australians and especially their captain, Tim Payne. After the break, we discuss how much longer the 36-year-old is likely to remain in that job.